Hey, look, it's the double wide dudes. Ooh, it's go time. All right, all right. Thanks for tuning in to the latest episode of the Double Wide Dudes. Uh, in the last one of the home buying process, uh, we talked about uh, the ins and outs of uh, buying a piece of property and, and knowing what you need to know uh, when you do decide to go that route. But if that's not going to be for you and, and mobile home parks is, is the route you want to go, uh, this episode is going to be great for you guys. We're going to tell you the ins and outs and, and what you need to know on uh, choosing the right community for you. Um, but talking about communities, AP, we're, uh, we're just about moved in. Yeah, yeah, our buddy uh, Jorge there at Texas Repo Mobile Homes was uh, nice enough to lend us a hand when we were getting our business started. And uh, he had actually purchased a foreclosed, condemned, manufactured home community right there off Highway 16 heading towards Poti. And uh, still a little bit of work, still left to do. But, uh, man, you, you remember what this place looked like when yeah. it first came out in January, right? Yeah. They have uh, they have done a tremendous amount of work. And, man, it, it, I can't even believe this is the same place. But, um, yeah, we're, we're all moved in. He was nice enough to let us put some show models here up front and uh, nice enough to give us a space to put our office. So, um, you, you know, the Riverwalk was nice. Definitely going to miss working down there at Geekdom. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it's really good to be back uh, here in the country. And uh, what would you think about that Medina River Park up there right up the road? Oh, man, it's incredible. Um, some nice running trails, some single track for, for the mountain bike. Um, you know, we, we had been riding our bike down at Geekdom, and I just kept telling Jason and Ern where, man, these, it's going to be real nice having um, this park right next to our, our location. You know, during lunch or, or having a break, you guys will be able to take a small run out there or, or go on the mountain bike. It's, it's incredible, man. I love it. Yeah, the scenery is absolutely gorgeous. It, uh, it doesn't take more than a day of being down there to realize why folks make the decision to, uh, to buy a piece of Texas or, or move out to a community park out here a little further out of town. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some absolutely beautiful scenery just 20, 30 minutes outside of here in San Antonio. Yeah, luckily it's right next to our, our lot. Yeah, that's my favorite part for sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just thinking of that, like today when we were going out to get some coffee – the construction man it was louder than ever today they were jackhammering the street and it's a constant hustle there yeah know? the construction's non-stop and i definitely appreciate uh, moving out to the country and just having that peace and, and quiet yeah it's gonna, gonna be a nice change i think for everybody yeah especially the barbecues yeah <laughs> <laughs> having our own porch there our yeah. own own back deck um jason's an expert on the on the Weber grill there. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to buying the food and, and watching him work his magic. Yeah. He keeps telling me, man, the, the burgers and the steaks and ribs that he cooks up. So I'm pretty excited about that, you know, but talking about the parks, uh, let's give our listeners the, the ins and outs of, of what you need to look for when considering a mobile home park. Right. You know, first off, there's a really good website, mhvillage.com where, uh, you'll be able to put a, a zip code of the area that you're thinking about living It'll essentially populate all the mobile home parks in that area. Right. Right. So you can go down just one by one and, and see the amenities, see the restrictions, um, and also a good number to call to get more information. But on that note, what, what are some things these customers need to ask the parks, AP, just to make sure it's going to be a residential area that's going to fit for them? Well, that's a great question. And, and the first thing I would do is definitely what you recommended. Um, get on a website like MH Village and find a list or two or three parks or communities that are in the area you want to live. One of the benefits of these manufactured home communities is you can stay closer to town if there's a particular school district you want to keep your kids in or whatnot. Um, But once you've narrowed it down to two or three communities that are in a location you want to be in, the first thing I would do is pick up the phone and find out what promotions or park packages these uh, communities are offering to new residents. Mm -hmm. A lot of communities will offer to pay for hookups, um, to your your utilities, electric, water, sewer, and whatnot, um, possible lower lot rents in exchange for signing a longer contract. Um, sometimes they offer free skirting or free stairs or free decks or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And all of those things lessen your initial investment into moving into those communities. Yeah, and, and that's a really big financial advantage about the parks, AP, where uh, that will offset the cost of, of getting it all set up. Right. Right. You know, in the last episode, we also talked about zoning. 
Um, is there going to be any type of zoning that you have to watch out for when, when you're choosing a park, AP? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's definitely a question you want to ask when you get these parks on the phone once you've narrowed down your list. Um, what are the requirements for putting a home in this park? A lot of these communities have age ranges uh-huh. where um, you know they only allow homes that were built after a certain year. Um, it's not uncommon for some communities to require things like hardboard skirting um, or decks to be on the front and back of the home. Um, and some even require that you have gardens or, or some kind of landscaping in front of your yard. So mm-hmm. you definitely want to get all of that information up front so you're not surprised by an added cost three, six months down the road. Yeah. And, and when I'm talking to some of my customers when they're decided to go the mobile home route, a lot of them are real excited about uh, the common areas, right? The playground for the kids or the pool, you know, something to have in, in the hot summer days. Yeah, a lot of these uh, communities in and around the San Antonio area um, offer some great amenities. Um, there's some that have some really nice pools and there's some that have some awesome playgrounds out there. Um, but with that said, there's also some that have really nice pictures of pools online, mm-hmm. but then you go to see them in person and uh, it's not quite what you saw in the pictures. So it's really important that before you make a final decision on a manufactured home community that you actually drive out there and get to take a look. Um, you know, you, you really want to make sure you're 100 percent on on that decision to move out to that community before your home comes um, driving down the road. Um, it's really expensive to move, move these homes. Um, if you come to find out that pool wasn't what you thought it was going to be or or that playground's out of order now um, and doesn't quite look the way it looks in those pictures. So just like everything we've talked about, Mousetrap, the home, the financing, the, the improvements, um, parks are something you definitely want to do some additional research in as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you just want to make a checklist on what's, what's going to be important in your community. If you, know, you have a bunch of kids and they love to play outside, that's probably something you're going to want to look into, right? Right. So cooling off at the pool and... Um, just having a common area to maybe have some cookouts for some birthday parties or anything. Um, but another one that, that I constantly run into is, you know, do they allow pets? Yeah, that's another great question to, to ask, especially here in Texas. You know, I, I know folks are attached to their animals just like they, they were their kids, uh, their fur babies, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's important to ask those questions because a lot of these communities have restrictions on either the number um, or the type of pets that you're allowed to bring into the community. Um, some of them out there will only allow you to bring a dog in, for instance, if they're considered a, a service animal. So okay. you definitely want to make sure you do that research ahead of time. And um, again, you're, you're not caught off guard when you bring your dog in and think everything's all well and good. And uh, come to find out you're, you're forced to get rid of your animal because you've already paid to have your home moved into that community. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of restrictions in, in every park varies, right? So when you kind of determine on what you, you want to spend monthly on a mobile home park. Just to sum up the things that we talked about, um, what promotions are they going to have, whether it's free skirting, free decks, you know, free hookups, um, the common areas and, and the playgrounds and pools and, uh, and just the amenities that you, you really want. And, and lastly, that we just touched on was the pets. Right? Find out if they allow pets, if they don't, and, and things like that. So those are going to be the things that you have to look into when uh, choosing a mobile home community park. You know, that'll kind of wrap up this episode on finding a location. Uh, when you're making the decision to, to get into a, a new home, the next step would basically be finding the right floor plan for you and your family. Right. Um, so tune into the next episode where we're going to get into that and uh, talk about size, dimensions, and, and what all goes into the home that's going to be a perfect fit for you guys. So uh, thanks for tuning into this episode, and, and we'll talk to you on the next one.